There are six levels of cloud that every engineer should understand, and each of these six levels leads to a completely different level of result. Now, unfortunately, most of the engineers that I've worked with are stuck in the first few levels. And the reason that they struggle to get hired is because they are operating at the wrong level. And when this happens, it can be very frustrating. It could feel impossible to break into the cloud or any tech position for that matter, let alone applying for senior engineering roles with any degree of confidence. But the thing is, most of that probably isn't true. For me, learning how to operate deliberately at the right level is one of the main reasons that I was able to build my own AI cloud security consultancy and help over 500 students learn cloud and AI with my first principles blueprint for engineers. And trust me, I'm certainly not a genius, although I like to tell myself that I am. I've seen similar results with hundreds of engineers that I've trained over the years. By the end of this video, you'll be able to see what level that you tend to operate at and how you can get to the next level that you need to be at. And just a heads up, the level that you need to be at is probably higher than you think. Let's start with level one. And this is actually where most people get stuck. This level is all about memorization. You're sitting there with flashcards or notes trying to cram every single AWS service name into your head. You're writing down definitions like S3 stands for simple storage service and EC2 is Elastic Compute Cloud. And look, I get it. When you're starting out, this feels productive, right? You think, okay, I am learning, I'm making progress. But here is the thing. This approach is actually setting you up for failure. We call this level, remember. This level, you might be able to pass an AWS certification exam, but when a hiring manager asks you a question like, how would you architect a solution for a company that needs to handle 100,000 users, you are stuck because memorizing service names doesn't teach you how to actually solve real business problems. And the worst part, even though that you've spent all of this time remembering stuff, it's actually not a good way to retain the information long term. But we'll talk about that later in the video. Now, level two is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. Instead of trying to memorize everything, here you're actually trying to comprehend what these services do and why they exist. And what I mean by that is that you could have two people both reading the exact same AWS documentation. And from the outside, it looks like they're doing the same thing. But mentally, they are attacking it with a different intention. The level one person is thinking, okay, I need to remember that RDS is a database service and DynamoDB is also a database service. I need to memorize their definitions. The level two person is thinking, wait, why does AWS have two different database services? What's the difference? At level two, we call this understand. And what you unlock is the ability to explain things. So now when someone asks you a question like, why would you choose RDS over DynamoDB? You can actually give them a real answer. You understand that RDS is a relational database, stores data in tables, and DynamoDB is way more flexible and a no SQL database. This is the level where you can start having actual conversations about cloud architecture instead of just reciting definitions. And honestly, this is typically how most junior cloud engineer interviews go. They just want to know that you understand how these services work together, and not that you can just list them off. But here is the problem. Most people think that level two is enough and they stop right there. However, understanding services and actually building with them, those are two completely different things, which is where level three comes in. This is where you start actually building projects. At this level, you can take what you've learned and solve straightforward problems. Problems. We call this apply and you unlock simple problem solving. Let's say that you want to store some files in the cloud. You know to use S3. Maybe you want to run some code and have it completely hands off for you. You know to use serverless compute like Lambda. It's basically one problem and one solution. Pretty straightforward. And look, this isn't a bad thing. You're actually building projects at this level. You're following tutorials, deploying ease to instances, setting up S3 buckets, creating Lambda functions. You've got something to show for your learning which makes you feel great right? But the reality is, in the real world, when you're working as an engineer, problems aren't this simple. A company doesn't just come to you and say, hey, we need exactly one Lambda function. Obviously not, right? They come to you and they say something like, we have a mobile app with 50,000 users, it's getting a little bit slow, customers are complaining, our database is also struggling, and we need to fix this ASAP whilst keeping our cost under control. And that's why most people hit a wall and get stuck. So if you want to get hired and actually succeed in this field, you need to get at least to level number four. Now, this is where things get serious. Level four is where you separate yourself from 90% of other aspiring cloud engineers. And here is the irony. Most people can reach level four 
but they don't. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. But first, at this level, you're not just using services to build simple projects anymore. You are analyzing different options and understanding trade-offs. This unlocks comparison, the ability to actually make informed decisions about which services to use and when. So instead of just knowing, oh, I need compute, so I'll use EC2. Here, you're thinking, do I need EC2, Lambda, ECS, or Fargate for this use case? What about scalability? What if traffic spikes? What happens when when a component fails. This is where you start thinking like an actual engineer instead of someone who just follows tutorials. Because at level three, you're just clicking around, following along, and not actually thinking why. Which means the moment the tutorial is finished, your understanding disappears with it too. So, a quick tip to actually help you operate at level four. After this video, go to ChatGPT and ask it this question. Give me cloud architecture interview questions that analyze trade-offs between AWS services in real world scenarios. Every single question that you get will force you to think at level four. But there is a problem. As soon as you try to operate at level four, it feels harder. You're not getting quick, easy wins anymore. There's no instant dopamine because you're actually having to think deeply about problems. And most people interpret this as that I am doing something wrong or that I'm getting slower. So they go default back to their old habits and they drop down to level two or level three where things feel easier and faster. And this is what I like to call misinterpreted effort hypothesis. When something requires more mental effort, we think that it's not working, even though that the effort is exactly what builds real expertise. That's why level four engineers are rare, not because they can't do it, but because they choose not to do it when things get challenging. But what about really complex strategic decisions that senior engineers and solutions architects make every single day? And this is where level five comes in. And if you can operate at this level, level five, you're looking at earning over $250,000 a year quite easily. That said, this is the level that confuses most engineers. So let me break it down for you really simply. Level five is all about judgment. At level four, you could analyze different options and understand the trade-offs. But at level five, you're asking the business questions. So what? Why does this matter? What's the impact on the company? We call this evaluate and it unlocks prioritization, the ability to make strategic decisions. And here is the difference. At level four, you might compare serverless versus containers and think, okay, you know, serverless scales automatically, but containers give me more control. At level five, you are thinking, given that our team has no DevOps experience, our budget is tight and we need to launch in three months, serverless makes more business sense, even though it might be a little bit more expensive per transaction. See how that changes everything. You're not just making technical decisions anymore. You are understanding what the impact and the consequence of your technical decisions will have on the business directly. And at this level, first principles thinking becomes critical. Instead of just looking what everyone else is doing or following the latest trends, you are asking the fundamental questions. What problems are we actually trying to solve? What are the core constraints? What does success look like for this business? This is how the best cloud engineers approach problems. They strip away all the noise and get to the fundamentals. You know that you're operating at level five when you catch yourself going back and forth between your ideas and speaking to the leadership team. Asking questions like, what's our growth projections? What's the team skill level? What's our budget ceiling? Because at this level, the best technical solution isn't always the right business solution. And I can't stress this enough. You can draw the best architecture diagrams. You can write detailed technical proposals. You can build proof of concepts. But if you're not thinking strategically about business context, you're not really at level five. And I see this all of the time. Engineers who can create impressive architectures, but they haven't even considered whether the team can actually maintain it or if the company can even afford to be able to scale it. That's the difference between a technical engineer and a first principles engineer who thinks strategically. Now, you might be wondering, is there a level six? There is actually, but unless you're aiming to invent entirely new ways of using cloud services that don't exist yet, you probably don't even need it. Level six is called create and it unlocks innovation. Level six is where you're solving problems that literally don't even have solutions anywhere. Not in AWS documentations, not in best practice guides, not in any sort of architectural patterns that you can find online. You're basically identifying gaps in the market in what's possible and then creating completely new approaches. But here is the 
reality. You don't need to operate at this level. Most engineers will be at the top of their game, earning great salaries, getting promotions and bonuses, solving business problems just by operating at level five consistently. Level six is for the tiny percentage of engineers who are literally pushing the boundaries of what's possible in cloud computing and technology as a whole. For everyone else, mastering level five is your ticket to success, which naturally begs the question, how do you even get to level five then? Well, there are actually two different methods. The first of which is to start learning and just go through each level from bottom to top. First, you memorize cloud services, then you understand them, then you apply them, then you analyze them, and so on. This obviously sounds logical to a beginner. It makes sense on paper, but for most people, this won't actually work and let me explain why. The problem with starting at the bottom is that it's very time consuming. And most people do not have enough time to even reach level five, let alone actually master it. So in reality, what happens is most people would just do a little bit at each level, kind of going back and forth. Maybe they'll memorize some services, understand a few concepts, build a simple project and never really progress. Now this doesn't work very well because we always forget things over time. We call this knowledge decay. While you're working on level two and level three, your knowledge of level one will slowly decay away unless you're actively practicing it. You're going to forget it. So instead of actually moving up the levels, you're spending most of your time relearning things that you continuously forgot. So what's the solution? right? What do you do? You should start at level five and then work your way down. The reason this works is because your brain actually processes cloud knowledge and forms stronger understanding at level five than it does at level one. When you set your sights on strategic business focused cloud solutions, your brain will automatically fill in and achieve the lower levels as almost a side effect. This doesn't work the other way around. If you're trying to memorize cloud services, your brain is not going to automatically be able to make strategic architectural decisions. But if you're trying to evaluate and prioritize cloud solutions for business problems, then you will gain even better retention so you can explain and solve simple problems when needed. Level five actually takes more effort and technically speaking, it's a little bit slower, but it pays off big time in the long term. This means when you start learning cloud, don't focus on trying to remember service names, understand individual services. Focus most of your attention on trying to evaluate cloud solutions for real business problems, which forces you to understand and analyze services in the first place. So how do you actually apply all of this? Now, instead of starting with what is S3, start with the question of how would I architect a cost-effective, scalable solution for a company that needs to store and serve millions of images? This immediately forces you to do a few things. Understand what S3 does, which is level two, know how to apply it, which is level three, compare it with other storage solutions, which is level four, make strategic decisions based on business requirements, which is level five. The business context is what makes all of the difference. When you approach learning cloud in this way, you're building strategic thinking from first principles, literally from day one. And when you constantly operate at level five, that's when you will start earning more money than you have ever done before. Now, if you found this framework useful and you actually want to become a cloud engineer, then check out my ultimate roadmap that takes you from zero to hired in the cloud covering every single thing that you need to know. Good luck.